The block wall and filling work on this foundation project was about to start. Taking this foundation build from this concrete trench to this and beyond and this is how it went down. Hi, we started off by ordering 6 inch query dust blocks, cement and water. We already had sand from before so we didn't have to buy any more at this stage. We are building a luxury house on our homestead, a three-story house which sits on a steep hill. So we want to make sure the foundation is solid. Soon the block work began. And as you can see, the blocks are being laid flat on their side for extra strength. But I think this was done for the outer walls only. As usual, I was very present for this foundation build, coming around from time to time, asking relevant questions and making sure that everyone was doing what they were supposed to do. And gradually, the foundation walls were coming up and up. Of course, the site engineer was always on site and the architect came from time to time to make sure that what was on paper was what was being translated on the ground. And they always took the time to address all of my concerns. With the block work at the required height, it was time to cast all the corner pillars to merge with the walls. The carpenter boarded up the rebars and the masons poured the concrete into each section to form the pillars. A few days after the foundation pillars had cured, the carpenter came back to remove all the wooden planks and this is what the corner pillars looked like then. The engineers and masons had decided to tackle the front porch portion of the foundation separately. So now they got to work on the front porch. They started by digging the trench, then they fixed the pillar mats and rebars. Once that was done, they concreted the rebars in place. Then the foundation block work for the front porch was done. Again, laying the cement blocks on their side for extra strength. And as per usual, I came to check on the front porch even during the rain. By the way, hi, my name is Koriwa. Kindly like this video now and type part 3 in the comment section below to show that you are enjoying this building series. That way, I know to put out the last video of this foundation build. Great. And so finally, the front porch too was done. Then it was time to damp proof the foundation. We did not lay damp proof membrane in the trenches of this foundation. The damp proof membrane was laid during the casting of the slab, which you will see when we get to that stage. However, at this stage, we added a damp proof chemical to the concrete when the foundation trench was being concreted or cast. And then the foundation wall was also plastered with a with a mix of cement, special damp proofing cement, and another special damp proof chemical, which is what is being done here. This was a recommendation of the anti dam guy, so that is what we did. But before the plastering stage, the steel bender had been busy fixing rebars over the foundation wall for what will become the foundation beam. He laid the beams across the entire outer wall of the foundation and also some cross beams were laid within the structure which you will see at a later stage of the foundation build. The carpenters then boarded up the rebars to allow for the concrete to be poured. Well, no, 
Notice how the rebars are sticking out from the wooden formwork. This is because only a portion of the rebars was to be cast at this stage. The upper portion was cast together with the floor slab, which again you would see at a later stage. The masons then got to work concreting the rebars in place. Once it had cured and the wooden formwork was taken off, it looked something like this. So with all the block work done, corner pillars done, and the outer rebar beam completed, it was time to fill in the foundation chambers with laterite so that work on the foundation slab could be done. So usually at this stage of the building process, laterite would have to be purchased in large quantities to fill the chambers. But I have a lot of laterite sitting underneath my topsoil. If you've been following this building series, then you know that we did a cut and fill earlier when we worked to flatten the slope of our land. This meant that the laterite in the land was already exposed at this stage. Also, if you've watched my digging for water video, then you know that we had decided to build a massive underground water tank to store harvested rainwater in after we failed to get any water digging the borehole. So with a bit of planning, we decided to kill four beds with one stone. <laughs> You'll see. We brought in the backhoe machine to dig out the hole for the proposed underground water tank. And not only that, we also dug out the hole of the septic tank, heaping all the laterite to the side. After the backhoe was done digging out the holes needed for the water tank and septic tank, we then got the big excavator to scoop up the heaps of laterite piled up by the backhoe to fill the foundation chambers with. That way I didn't need to source any laterite externally. So in the end, we didn't have to buy laterite and we also didn't have piles of dirt just sitting around on the side being a nuisance from digging the underground water tank and septic tank. It was a win-win situation thanks to prior planning. The excavator continued to carefully fill the foundation chambers. We needed to consider the weight of the laterite being piled onto the foundation, the rocks within the laterite and many other considerations so as not to cause any damage to the foundation wall. So the site engineers paid particular attention at this stage in directing the excavator operator in what should be done. At the same time, we had a number of laborers working hard to spread the laterite to all the chambers within the foundation and soon I was able to stand on the foundation and enjoy the view. It was beautiful. It was hard work for all involved so we got everyone some drinks and bread just to give them a break. According to them, if they eat anything heavier than that, they won't be able to continue working as hard. So they usually eat before they start work and only eat again after they are done for the day. But the bread and drink worked just fine. We also had some leveling work to do on the grounds, which we would have had to do at a later stage. So we took advantage of the excavator being there to get it done now. And that is what I meant by killing four beds with one stone. Like I said, this house sits on a slope, meaning that the back of the land site is higher than the front bit. And as you can see from our 3D designs, we are going for a sunken kind of look with the backyard. And so in order to get the back porch descending into the backyard, we needed to do some more cutting. And as we needed more laterite for this big foundation, it made sense to do this leveling work at this stage so that we can get all the laterite we need to fill this big foundation. We also needed to fill and level the front portion of this house, which as I said before, is a bit low. We love the natural slope of our land, but we want the immediate surroundings of the house to sit flat within the hill. So after the excavator was done cutting the area that will become the backyard, we needed to use the laterite to fill in the space in front of the house. We had built a retaining wall 
earlier, we needed to fill in the laterite behind the retaining wall. Now, I know some of you were worried about drainage, but rest assured, we have plans for drainage systems, but that will come in at a later stage of the homestead development. So do subscribe to the channel and stick around so you don't miss those videos when the drainage is done. Okay, so we called in a tipper truck to work with the excavator in filling of the front yard. The excavator loaded up the tipper truck with the dirt and the tipper truck dumped the laterite in designated spots within the front yard. So this continued until there was enough laterite in the yard to be spread. Then the excavator spread the laterite evenly until we had a very gentle slope, almost flat, in the front yard. This work would have had to be done at a later stage anyway, so getting it all done on the one day was a blessing because it saved me a lot of money in the long run doing it this way. So by the end of this foundation stage, we had dug out the underground water tank, the underground septic tank, cut and leveled the backyard as well as filled and leveled the front yard. So yeah, again. We killed four beds with one stone during this phase of the foundation project. And there were even bonuses because we got the excavator to leave heaps of laterite in vantage positions for other structures that will be developed in the future on the homestead. So we don't need him to come in again to cut anything. We have all the laterite we will need heaped up in spots that won't be a nuisance. The excavator worked through the night doing a few snacks here and there on the homestead and it was time to call it a day. A very tiring but fruitful day. Next day, I went back to the site as the laborers were still working on spreading the laterite to all the chambers of the foundation, especially in the middle where the excavator couldn't reach. And for the first time, we were able to drive straight into the residence area and I just had to give out a little club and a pat on the back. This is what the backyard looked like and this is what it looked like in the front. Meanwhile, the laborers worked hard to get the foundation filled and leveled out and soon it was done and looking something like this. With this filling stage completed, we were good to do the other works necessary to be able to pour the floor slab on the foundation. But that is a video for another day. Don't forget to like this video and type part 3 in the comment section if you wish me to bring the last video of this foundation build. Thanks for watching. Catch you in the next.